Good morning. From the day we met to present day, I've often asked myself, as I'm sure you have, why was PJ so inspirational? What about him evoked such an emotional response of attachment? What was his secret sauce? We've heard a lot of stories last night, but what, what was it? And I thought if I could figure that out, maybe someday I could emulate those qualities and achieve maybe a fraction of his greatness. We've all converged here this weekend for many different reasons. Admiration, love, respect. Some of us, ha ha some of us have an 805 lecture to give. But we've, we're here to celebrate Dr. Janetta's legacy. And I don't know about you, but if I had to boil it down, he gave me, he made me feel three feelings. Still today, he made me feel talented, he made me feel important, and he made me feel special. So first, special. Peter embraced opportunities to make a connection. Shortly after we arrived in Pittsburgh, my wife Julie and I decided to have a wine tasting party. We invited Peter and Diana, hoping they might come, but not actually thinking they would arrive. Sure enough, on a cold, wintry Saturday morning, evening, I'm sorry, he, I heard a knock at the door, and first to arrive at our modest Miner's Row house, sitting on the side of the steep hill in Swissvale, in walked PJ and Diana. He gave me his signature bow and curtsy, which I thought was a little strange, but grew to love. And he made a beeline for the kitchen to start helping Julie with the hors d'oeuvres. He appointed himself the sous chef, and we had a most delightful and interesting evening. Now, I don't know what Swiss Vale is like presently, but back then, it wasn't Ligonier. I'm sure that party was not the typical party that they attended, not the typical town they visited, and certainly not the typical wine they drank. Think about how busy your schedule is now, and if what his schedule was like in his heyday. What would you do if a junior resident asked you to a wine party? He made you feel special. And he made you feel talented. He gave us the freedom in OR8 that many other residents all over the country didn't get. Where else would you be doing craniotomies your first month on service? I remember calling from Russia 20 years ago like it was yesterday. Dr. Janetta, I just gave grand rounds in St. Petersburg at the hospital, and the chief wants to do a microvascular decompression. His reply, when? My answer, tomorrow. What should I do? Well, how many has he done? Zero. Long pause. PJ's answer, go for it. Go for it. Keep him out of trouble. Use muscle and don't screw it up. Can you imagine what a pat on the back that was for me as a sixth year resident 5,000 miles away. I'm sure you can, because he likely gave you that kind of a pat on the back when you needed it. He made you feel talented. And lastly, he made you feel important, but not too important. He exuded humility and taught by example, right? Here was one of the greatest neurosurgeons and yet he insisted, call me Peter, to staff, to nurses, to colleagues. He was important, yes, but not too important to not call him by name. You must all remember his admonition that if a nuclear bomb went off at the AANS and all the neurosurgeons were wiped off the face of the earth, healthcare would not blink an eye. As neurosurgeons, we were important, but not too important. I remember hosting him at Princeton Brain and Spine as visiting professor. After his lecture, I gave him a tour of the facilities. I shared with him our strategic plan, and I handed him some marketing materials to peruse. I have to admit, I was quite proud of what we had accomplished. We had competed against some major universities that had come into our market, and I wanted to show him that I wasn't just wasting my time in private practice, as he used to often tease me. You know, the marketing materials, the news articles, they're, they're quite flattering. You know, this stuff can make you feel good. It can make you, can, can be intoxicating. And at the end of the tour, he focused on an article that was hanging on the wall. It was a picture with a legend and my arm around a local personality. I'm sure you have these kinds of articles in your office. He scanned the photo 
clutched my forearm and then very seriously looked at me and said, Mark, beware of the Delilah of the press. It's all BS. Never focus on fluff. I'll never forget it. Important, but not too important. Before I close, I'd like to mention something else that was important to Peter, and that was his foundation. The Janetta Foundation has helped support this event and Dr. Janetta's research. And with Robert's help and collaboration, this meeting has come to fruition. Um, and as a parent, and I'm sure you all know, um, if it's important to your kids, it should be important to you. And we're all of Dr. Janetta's kids. And if it was important to him, it should be important to us. And I want to encourage all of you to please register, sign up, and, and make a contribution because it's these kind of meetings that have come from the Janetta Foundation. As I said at the beginning, it's taken me years to realize PJ's gravitas and why he had an impact around, with everyone around him. My hope for all of you is that as we celebrate his legacy and you experience this love and respect today and on your way home, my hope is that you ask yourself the same question. What made this man so transformational? And when you find your answer, and in your own way, go be that person. And, like he did, pass it on. <laughs>